Namaste. And welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. I'm Anjali. How much I hey, I say hey up. And today we're going to be reacting to what is Hinduism. So this was on a request list. And this is one of those things like we've been um, doing some of the festivals. Like we did Diwali. Yeah. We did uh, Lord Ganesh. Um, we did Bath Karma. So we've been trying to celebrate more of the holidays and the festivals here in the Jan family um, to learn a little bit more. And you guys have been sending us more links to learn more and more. Yeah. And so we've been doing little Krishna videos and it's just been amazing. And so I hope this gives us a little bit more. We've done some Sadhguru, so hopefully this gives us a little bit more insight because it's a 17 minute video. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it can't touch on everything because I know it's very diverse, um, but this will be interesting. So not too long ago, we went to the Indian shop mm -hmm. and we got a few things to add to our collection because we have um, Ram already, like Ram yeah. and his brother and Sita and Hanuman um, statue. And we have Lord Ganesh statue and we got some new Diaz, Diaz, right? Diaz. yeah, right? We're learning. And uh, Vishnu. Yeah. So we're adding some more to our collection as we're learning more and um, helping the kids. So if you're new to our channel, my husband is from India and um, has grown up Hindu. And so we are trying to kind of connect with India and our roots and a little bit and learn uh, a little bit more about the Hindu religion, culture. Yeah. Depending on... Um, how you believe it right mm -hmm. and all the different gods and so this has been an amazing journey so let's start up this video because it's kind of long and yeah. lots of stuff to learn so all right hinduism the religion of over a billion people is the world's oldest religion and probably the most confusing one to non-hindus some say it isn't even a religion more a way of life hindus themselves call it the sanatana dharma the eternal tradition so what is hinduism does YOLO apply to them? And who is this elephant guy? Oh, well, oh. let's find out. Hmm. Hinduism is the world's oldest active religion. It's the result of the merging of the ancient Indus Valley civilization and the nomads that came into India around 1500 BC. Some scholars say it could even go back many more thousands <laughs> of years. Aliens. But you we won't delve too now. deep into dates because dates in Hinduism are very, very controversial. But one thing is certain, Hinduism is old, like at least 36 Betty Whites. <laughs> Hinduism has been around for so long that it and the concept of India yeah. itself are inseparable. Hindu and India even come from the same word. Sanskrit was the ancient language of the Hindus and the Sanskrit name for the Indus River is Sindhu. The ancient Persians who sat across the Indus tended to switch their S's to H's. Hmm. So Sindhu became Hindu. So the people living across the river became Hindus. The Persians told the Greeks who dropped that very not Greek like H stuck in a very Greek like really? E to the end and boom, India. Hinduism has a long, long history. But today we'll be focusing on just the core beliefs of Hindus because I don't have the willpower <laughs> to animate three hour long video. Hindus are a diverse group. Some are strict, dedicating their lives to prayer, while others don't believe in any gods but still follow Hindu philosophy. To make things easier to understand, let's break Hinduism down into seven core beliefs. So, here's my rap about the seven Hindu beliefs. You promised you weren't gonna do the rap. Come on, you're better than this man. Fine, here's the regular version then. One, belief in one universal soul. Hindus believe in a universal soul known as Brahman, a formless, genderless source of all reality. Brahman is the universe and the material that makes up the universe. It's a trippy concept, but think of Brahman as an ocean and everything else as drops propelling out of that ocean, separate for a time, but still the same thing, if that makes sense. Two, belief in an immortal individual soul. In Hinduism, souls are known as Atman, <laughs> Actions of the soul while in a body have effects on that soul's next life. When you die, your soul moves to another new body. This is called transmigration. The so kind of body the soul fly. inhabits next 
is determined by karma. Three, belief fly. in karma. Karma is action, usually good or bad actions that affect society. For Hindus, karmic actions in the past affect us today and our actions today affect our soul's future. Four, belief in moksha. The goal in Hindu life is to somehow get back to Brahman. If a Hindu can do this, they will be freed from the cycle of life and death. This is called moksha. You can achieve moksha by realizing your oneness with Brahman. How you realize this is up to you. For this reason, Hindus pray, lead me from the unreal to the real. Five, belief in the Vedas. The Vedas are Hindu sacred books of knowledge. There are four Vedas. Hindus believe that all four were divinely revealed to ancient Hindu sages. We'll take a closer look at the Vedas in a while. Six, belief in cyclical time. For Hindus, there are no beginnings or endings. Time is a series of cycles, each cycle containing four ages or yugas. There's the Krita, the Treta, the Dwarapara, and the Kali. Added together, hmm, the four yugas total yeah. about 4.32 million years. At the end of each cycle, declining human morality leads to the total destruction of reality. Hindus believe that we are in the fourth and final yug, Kali. 7. Belief in Dharma Dharma is a difficult word to translate to English. Proper behavior is the best that I could come up with. Dharma maintains balance in the universe. As long as everything in the universe, like animals, plants, and humans, follow their dharma, then everything will be fine. <laughs> if they break from the dharma though, things will be super not fine. Each being has its own dharma. A lion's dharma is to kill and eat antelope, a king's dharma is That's to rule we well, to a subscriber's dharma is to smash the like button and ring the notification bell. For humans, their specific dharma is usually based on their age and their caste. An old priest will have a very different dharma than a young merchant, for example. So those are the seven core beliefs of Hinduism. With them, you can understand the Hindu mindset. Unlike Christianity or Islam, Hinduism is a non-profit organization. There is no Jesus or Muhammad for Hindus. There is no Bible, Quran, or Torah. Instead, they have a bunch, and I mean a bunch, of different sacred texts. The four Vedas form the basis of the Hindu faith. So let's take a look at them. One, the Rig Veda. The Rig Veda is a collection of songs that praise and discuss ideas like truth, reality, and the universe, along with discussions on war, weddings, and rituals. Two, the Yajur Veda. The Yajur Veda covers stuff such as sacrificial rites and rituals. Three, the Sama Veda. Sama literally means sweet song that destroys sorrow. It is mostly songs dedicated to praising gods. It's different than the rest of the Vedas because it's set to music. Four, the Atharva Veda. The Atharva Veda is my favorite one. Do you want to curse your enemies? Or charm that special someone? Maybe learn to invoke rain or discover herbal medicine along with tips on warfare? Like how to make poison arrows? Well, this Veda has you covered, along with a bunch of other charms and curses. It even has a curse against cursors. Avoid us, O oh curse, as a burning fire avoids a lake. Strike him here that curses us, as the lightning of heaven, the tree. A link to the Atharveda is in the description, just in case you <laughs> need a spell to get a wife or another to banish pigeons from your presence. It's, it's great. After the Vedas come the Upanishads, which are like a sequel that makes the original make much more sense. They were probably written down between 800 BC and 500 BC, during a time when some Hindus started to question the Vedas. Their ideas became the Upanishads. The Upanishads are books on philosophy, like we would expect from Plato or Aristotle. They're all about questioning, doubt, debate, and finding the answers to life's difficult questions. A theme in the Upanishads is that people are not their minds, or bodies, or egos, but their Atman. Your soul is you. Everything else is unreal and temporary. After the holy texts like the Vedas and the Upanishads are other less divine but still important texts. These include stuff like the Puranas, the Bhagavad Gita, and the Ramaya and the Mahabharata. The Puranas are like encyclopedias of Hindu beliefs. There are 18 well-known Puranas. The Puranas cover things from yoga, to army organization, to taxation, to the caste system, to hell, gods, and everything in between. The Bhagavad Gita, Gita for short, 
is one of Hinduism's most important texts. The Gita takes place on a battlefield where Arjuna, a great warrior, refuses to fight. Lord Krishna steps in to urge Arjuna to fight mm -hmm. and their discussion covers things such as dharma and how to live your best life. Arjuna eventually fought yeah. after Lord that Krishna taught him the truth yeah. about dharma. As a member of the warrior caste, Arjuna's dharma was to fight against evil. The lesson <laughs> of the Gita is that everyone faces difficult choices, but they must act on them according to their dharma, no matter how unpleasant. Along with all these philosophical texts, Hinduism has two action-packed epics, the Ramaya and the Mahabharata. The Ramaya, the early of the two texts, tells the story of Prince Sita. Rama. In the epic, you find out about his 14-year-long exile, the abduction of his wife Sita, his battle Anamar, with the evil Jin's demon favorite. Ravana, yep. and his awesome monkey psychic Hanuman. For Diwali, right? now they the second like epic, Diwali. the Mahabharata, is the longest poem in the world. Five times the length of the Bible and eight times the length of the Iliad and Odyssey combined. It rivals any soap opera you've ever seen when it comes to drama. Murder, betrayal, love, love murder, and giant battles. The Mahabharata has it all. The theme running through the Ramaya and the Mahabharata is that Dharma must be followed for society to function. In Hinduism, there are four goals a person should aim for to have a good life. The first of these is Dharma, followed by Artha, the pursuit of prosperity and good reputation, Kama, pleasure both in body and in mind, and Moksha, the release from the cycles of rebirth. Hindus should practice Artha and Kama with Dharma in order to achieve Moksha. There are also six temptations Hindus should try and avoid. Kama, lust and materialism, <laughs> This kama is different from the good kama mentioned above, I know. Next is kruda, which is anger, lobha, which is greed, moha, which is unrealistic attachment to things, people, and power, mada, which is pride, and matsarya, which is jealousy. By following their dharma and avoiding these six temptations, a Hindu can break the cycle of rebirth and have their soul merge back into Brahman. But even though everything comes from Brahman, who is the one real thing in Hinduism, Hindus do, after all, have thousands of gods. So let's take a look at them. First, there's Brahma, the creator. He created everything in the universe, but he is not the universe itself, because that's Brahman. They aren't the same thing. That last letter changes a lot, apparently. He has four heads. The heads face each of the four directions to represent the four Vedas, which he created, and the four Yugas. He also holds a book, which represents knowledge. Oh, and he rides a giant swan because he's just fancy. His consort is Saraswati, the goddess of learning. Vishnu, the preserver, is the second member of the Hindu trinity. He preserves the world created by Brahma until it is eventually destroyed by Shiva. He holds a discus, which he uses to cut down anyone that tries to mess with his dharma, along with a conch, which symbolizes victory and the five elements. Vishnu has many, many avatars, such as Krishna or Rama, who he uses to defend Dharma on Earth. Oh, yeah. and he yeah. rides a giant eagle named Garuda. Vishnu has two consorts, the goddess Lakshmi and Budevi. Budevi is the Earth goddess and Lakshmi is the goddess of good fortune and wealth. Next is Shiva the Destroyer, the third member of the Hindu trinity. It's his job to destroy the universe in order to prepare for its renewal at the end of each cycle of time. The most identifiable of his features is his third eye, which he almost always keeps closed. If he does open it and you're in front of him, then you will have your face melted off. When not on making existence, Shiva enjoys long walks with his bull named Nandi. At the end of the Kali Yuga, the fourth age of the world, Shiva will perform a dance that destroys the universe. Which is odd because people have told me that my <laughs> dance moves make them wish the world would end. So me and Shiva have quite a lot in common. Paravati and Sati are Shiva's consorts. Shiva also has two sons, Ganesha and Murugan. Ganesha is worshipped as the remover of obstacles and Murugan is the god of war. Ganesha holds a very special place in the heart of Hindus due to him being the remover of obstacles. The elephant head is the most obvious clue to identifying him. He was actually born with a human head, but after Shiva cut that one off, he kind of had to make do with an elephant one. If you're Christian or Muslim, you're aware that your religion has a bunch of different denominations, like Catholics or Protestants, Sunni and Shia, 
Hinduism has these too. Hindus developed four major denominations, some of which have their own subdivisions. The Vaishnavas mm. primarily worship Vishnu and Shaivas primarily worship Shiva and his sons. Smartas follow sacred texts like the Puranas, the Ramaya and the Mahabharata rather than the Vedas. They worship five gods and goddesses, Ganesha, Durga, Surya, Shiva and a preferred avatar of Vishnu. Finally, Shaktas worship the goddess Devi. Shaktas see Devi as the ultimate and eternal reality, like a feminine Brahman. Even though there are all these variations and more, the core beliefs of Hindus remain mostly the same. Hindus believe that Dharma keeps the balance in the universe. If the scales between good and evil start tipping towards evil, then something needs to intervene to fix the universe's Dharma. This divine intervention is known as an avatar. The literal meaning of the word avatar is descent. Avatars are gods that descend to Christian. earth to intervene whenever help is needed to restore Dharma. For example, when the earth was dragged underneath the ocean, Vishnu descended to earth as the avatar of Raha a boar and drag the earth back out. In other cases, Vishnu was born on earth as a human avatar like Rama or Krishna, where he spent his avatar's life fixing Dharma. So, the caste system. If you only know one thing about Hinduism, this is probably it. People see it as an oppressive system that locks people in place based on their birth. And for a huge part of history, that's what it's been, unfortunately. Let's do a quick explanation of what the caste system is. In Hinduism, there are four castes or classes that you can be born into. There's the Brahmin, the priest, the Kshatriyas, the warriors, the Vishas, the traders, and the Shudras, the manual laborers. The main basis for the caste system can be found in the Bhagavad Gita and the Rig Veda. Krishna says in the Gita, I have created a fourfold system in order to distinguish among one's qualities and functions. The Rig Veda also refers to the four castes. It says humans were created from parts of the god Purusha, the Brahman from his face, the Kshatriya from his arms, the Vaisha his thighs, and the Shudra his feet. This system was supposed to assign people functions based on their abilities, not their birth. If someone had the qualities of a Brahman or a Vaisha, they could fill those roles. The Gita didn't restrict movement among castes, and the caste system functioned as intended for a while, until a document known as the Laws of Manu came about around the 5th century BC. Popularly referred to as the Manu Shmirti, they created hard rules for Hindu life. Two rules presented in it contributed to the way the caste system turned out. Manu states that the Brahman were the lords of all castes and he forbid moving among the castes. The caste you were born into was now the caste you're stuck in. If you give humans a hierarchy, they'll exploit it, and things will go sour pretty quickly. As time passed, Hindus began thinking in terms of upper and lower castes. Soon, cleaning toilets, tanning leather, and dealing with meat products were thought to be impure. The people doing those jobs became untouchables. The lowest of the low, a people without caste. And the rest is history. The modern world has brought many changes though. Now Hindus mix freely while working together in the same businesses, attending the same schools, and generally just living together. But when it comes to marriage, many Hindus still stick to their own caste. But this too is changing, and on Hindu dating websites you can actually see people list a non-preference for caste. It'll say, caste no bar. So, those are the basics of Hinduism. It isn't even close to covering everything, one video simply can't do it. Hinduism is too diverse, too deep, and means too many different things to different people. But learning even the basics of this fascinating and ancient religion gives us an insight into the worldview of over a billion people. And I hope you enjoyed it. So he did a really great job yeah. putting this together. I think answers a lot of questions but definitely just touches on the surface of hinduism yeah. um but his graphics oh, and really humor good. and music um kept you entertained i think for the 17 minutes so mm -hmm. you guys will have to let us know like how much was accurate but it seemed pretty accurate yeah it did. some of the stuff we already knew from just celebrating some of the holidays we know Doing some these of videos, the gods yeah. they talked about 
other religions or different sections of Hinduism, but I know other religions also came from Hinduism, mm -hmm. uh, like Buddhism came off of Hinduism, Sikhism. So there's a lot. And I feel like it has, like Sadhguru said, it, it seems more of a way of life and less like a religion. Like people just adapt to this way of living as opposed to like, um, like in the Christian, like this is, this is what you have to do. There seems to be a little bit more flexibility. Yeah. You like this God, you want to follow this book. Whereas some of the other religions, I don't think have as much freedom yeah. to kind of believe in different gods in in different things. So, or different um, like, Vedas. Yeah. Um, so that's, there's a lot more flexibility and I liked that. But, um, and I feel like it's one of those things that has given back to the world like not every religion can say they're giving stuff that anybody can do you know you know we go to H india and everybody celebrates diwali everybody celebrates the ganesh festival yeah it's like no matter what religion you are you can enjoy these festivals not just to enjoy them but you can be a part of that and and not be a hindu to celebrate it like some of the religious things like if you're not Christian you can't you can only go so far in the church or you can only do so many things in the church whereas I feel like this you don't have to be a, a Hindu in a certain form you yeah. can enjoy what learn. you want it. so um another thing that they gave back is yoga which not all not just Hindus not right. just Hindus do yoga like everybody around the world does yoga everybody around the Everyone. world does yoga I mean it's one of those things that's, you know relaxing you know Peaceful. meditation I wonder if meditation was something that started from Hinduism yoga. and yeah. what through yoga maybe you guys can let us know about that I'd be curious to know yeah um but yeah yeah yoga is one of those things that you know there's down the street I don't know how many yoga studios we can find around and um actually the school I work at offers it to the teachers after school for de-stressors um so it's really one of those things that's amazing yeah. and that you don't have to be a Hindu to do yoga yeah it's uh for everybody yeah peace too like Gandhi had always talked about peace but I feel peaceful way of life not yeah. just like a religion it definitely, I feel like they don't encroach on other people. They definitely don't go invading other countries. You know, they are kind of like, welcome you with open arms. And I feed you first because guests are gods. So these are the things we've kind of learned through this. Um, surprisingly, through all the invaders, you know, of all kinds. It survived. It survived that there's still so many people that practice it and not just in India there are a lot of people all that practice around the world. it yeah. all around the world and so it is one of those i think very welcoming re religions or way of life mm -hmm. for people to just kind of accept yeah and it's amazing yeah so the other thing they talked about that i thought was interesting and i know daddy tried to explain it to him was the yeah. caste system and how you know there were different castes and then um, eventually I feel like maybe when different invaders came in and politicians came in and people came in, they kind of changed it. And then there ended up being another, like the untouchables. And so I, I know a lot of that has kind of gone away and it's not quite as bad, um, as strict. Yeah. yeah. Like where people are stuck, like they talked about them being used to be able to kind of move like if you were good at something, you could move to that cast. It wasn't set in stone that you were that person. Um, and now, you know, it's probably a little bit harder to get out of that. And it doesn't tell you who you are. You know, it's kind of yeah. where your family came from or, or the trade your you were doing. family is kind of. Yeah, from if your family was a ruler or if you were a tradesman, um, it kind of just depended on where you fell and so I'm glad some of that has changed a little bit and it's not so strict. Like he said, people are writing that they don't, that that's not, a, um, you know, if they're looking for someone, that's not a necessity what cast they're in. Um, 
that I knew back in the day that was a big, big thing. So I'm glad that's changing. So this video had lots of great information. And like I said, just scratching the surface. So I hope you guys liked it just as well. And don't forget to subscribe. And join the wonderful growing Jan family. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Bye.